All right, what's happening? Welcome back to Rock of the Week. And this week's rock is quartzite. That is quartzite. So, in this area, it's loads of quartzite. It's actually quartzite interbedded with samite. But how do you get quartzite? We're going to talk about it, right? So quartzite's a metamorphosed sandstone, basically. Originally deposited as sand, it's then put under extreme pressure and high temperatures, and it fuses all the quartz crystals together, forming a granoblastic texture in geology, right? So in geology, a granoblastic texture is where all of the grains like have that perfect like kind of edge to them, and they're all fused together. And in this case, quartzite has got that granoblastic texture to it. It's got a sugary texture to it sometimes as well, right? So it's pretty cool, and it's made up of 90% worth of quartz. Now, the quartzite in this area, we'll move on to actually talk about and how it forms, right? So it's part of the Dalradian supergroup, which is found in the central highlands terrain in Scotland. And you have, like, to the north of it, the Great Glen Fault, which runs from Inverness all the way down to Fort William. It's a straight slip fault that once upon a moved, once upon a time moved throughout geological time, right, during that Caledonian erogeny. And then you have, like, to the south, the Highland Boundary Fault Line, which yeah. runs from Stonehaven all the way through to Helensbrat and then across to Arran, right? So, yeah, that's the Grandfane terrain or the Central Highlands terrain. Now, this Dalradian supergroup is made up of four different groups, with the bottom group being known as the Grandfane terrain, which is what we are in just now. Now, this Grandfane terrain formed between 800 and 870 million years ago, right? That's a long time ago, but back then, Scotland was situated close to the South Pole, right? And we had an ocean developing, right? This ocean was known as the Iapetus Ocean. And as this was developing and kind of rifting apart a wee bit, you had the deposition of all this sediment at the edge of a continent known as Laurentia, and that's where we were. We were on this continent known as Laurentia back then, right? So as you had the deposition of these sands, the silts and the muds, these all compacted and cemented together over geological time, layer upon layer, you know, you get more layers developing in a basin, an empty space in geology, right? It forms sandstones, siltstones and mudstones over geological time. The more layers you get on top of each other, forming your sedimentary rock. Now, the original depositional environments for that are thought to be, you know, shallow seas as this Iapetus ocean starts forming. So when you look at the Grampian group, you've got quartzites, which probably formed in a delta area, lots of sand being poured out. You have some limestones as well in there, and you also have like mudstones, like ants and dirty sandstones, which is known as to turn into a samite eventually, right? It just has more mica in it, like so it can't really be classified as a quartzite. It's more a samite, right? And you have peelites, which are your mudstones. They form peelites or schistos, peelites, right? Schists and stuff. But aye, back to the quartzites. Obviously, they think that these quartzites were probably deposited into a delta area or on a beach, right? That's where usually you get sand. It's the first thing to drop out, as we spoke about before when we spoke about sedimentary rocks. And then you get the deeper stuff, your muds and that's more in the deeper ocean, right? When we back to like the metamorphic event that happened, you that come, come. So obviously we know about the Caledonian erogeny. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know all about the Caledonian erogeny. Like it was between 390 and 490 million years ago. In the middle of it was 450 million years ago. As this Caledonian erogeny developed and you had the closure of this Iapetus ocean where all this sediment was originally deposited, these sediments then got caught up in that and were crumbled and folded and buckled and the crystals, like the quartz grains and the sandstone, were fused together forming this quartzite that we see today. And we can still see the original beds of the quartzite, like going up and down like that way, it's dipping this way as well, like it's all over the place. You actually see it's highly faulted, meaning it's not only just went under, like undergone, uh, what's it called? It's not only undergone the ductile deformation, but it's also undergone brittle deformation when it's been a little bit closer up in that crust. It's like undergone that brittle deformation, meaning that it's been cracked and you can see veins running through it and it's faulted and that's what's formed this bay in here because it's a fault line and there's loads of different fault lines in between. It's caused like the, you know, the waves when they're eroding away, the, the different like cracks and stuff in the rocks, it's like going to eat away at that, you know, more easily than the surrounding rocks forming these lovely caves and arches and stuff like that. But aye, Grampian Group, that's how the Grampian Group formed of the Dalradian Supergroup and it's split into other little wee subgroups as well, but we're not going to go into the main details about them, we're just going to learn about quartzite today and that's what quartzite is. It's a baked sandstone, it's basic sedimentary rock, a meta sedimentary rock. Now, you can get quartzite forming as well, like when you have like a, a during contact metamorphism, because this is regional metamorphism that's formed this quartzite. 
Now, contact metamorphism is when you have a magma chamber in the crust and surrounding that magma chamber, the rocks, if they're sandstone originally, they're going to end up turning into a quartzite. Because a quartzite is a non-foliated metamorphic rock, so it doesn't really have anything going on inside it. It doesn't have schistosity or that because it's got hardly any mica in it. Like, because mica usually forms a schistosity when you have these rocks that have been put under extreme pressures and temperatures, part of a regional metamorphic event such as the Caledonian orogeny. And then the last thing to happen to these rocks is they've been brought up to the surface throughout uplift and that, and now they, they appear here. And that's it, really. That's all we're going to talk about today. Quartzite. And that's you, Rick. <laughs>